Women's football. I'd rather be doing that than this right now. Eric, was it just the uniqueness, like you said, pregame when you play a Jokic team that is just so different than anything else, or did you think it was something your team didn't do? Uh, no, I mean, I, I think we did a lot of things to put ourselves in a position to have a chance to win it. We just didn't do those three or four more things um, that would have been necessary uh, tonight, uh, um, because they are unique. They, it, it, it's not something you're, you're seeing every single night, just in terms of the, the cutting and the passing, and um, you know a lot of those easy baskets that are just totally random off of you know non pick and roll basketball that this league has become. Um, but I think, uh, particularly in that fourth quarter, uh, we gave up two cuts, then we gave up an offensive rebound off a very similar type thing when it was a, a possession game, and that took it to seven twice. Uh, and at that point, we're scrambling to get back, you know, to try to get even, and we were never able to get it even or take the lead. And, and that's what I really wanted to see us do in that fourth quarter, um, you know, particularly in those last six minutes. I think if we could have gotten a lead somehow, um, our grit, our toughness, we would have found a way to, to, to get the job done. Um, but you have to credit them. You know, they're a well-coached team. Uh, they're also – they have some institutional knowledge of how they want to play, and – if you make a mistake, they uh, know how to capitalize uh, against it. So you talk about KPIs. I know it didn't work tonight, but how important has it been just to win the possession battle? And you look at the the edge and field goal attempts. How, how important has that become for this team this season? Yeah, that's one of the things. Uh, you know, a couple things that the team has really bought into for the last couple months. One that we can win games defensively, regardless of how we're shooting. Um, we have these elite competitors, as long as we can keep this into a possession game, we can win a lot of games, you know, going down the stretch. And we have closers uh, as well. Uh, the second thing, you know, really since uh, November was taking care of the ball. I, I think we were averaging about 16 turnovers at the time. We really needed to shave that by two and a half, three a game. And uh, the guys uh, have taken that to heart. Um, and, you know, for the last two months, for the most part, we usually do outshoot teams um, and and win the possession game. Um, so that's a big; those are big keys, uh, you know, to our, our success. And as we get healthier, we'll get the other parts of our game rounded out, and um, and hopefully that'll lead to some really good things. I guess ninety nine percent of the time we're used to there being a, a very specific coverage for the best player or the second best player on the other team. Do you, have you ever felt like you've had a a comfortable coverage that you can settle into with you? No, you know, it, it probably makes it even more challenging that you only face them twice a year. Uh, and then you're trying to put in a game plan either on a shoot around or like today in a walkthrough. Uh, and, it, you know, if you face them multiple games in a row, you, you would have to come up with some guidelines. Um, but it is, you know, certainly unique. It, it's not just 60 pick and rolls, you know, that you're typically seeing. Um, you know, it's a lot of the post, a lot of the high post, a lot of in just random situations where now they have a great synchronicity of when to cut, you know, when to open up something for somebody else. Um, but you can see why they're highly motivated to move without the ball. You, you end up getting easy baskets, and that, that can uh, make a lot of people move and burn some calories. I suppose it seems like obviously the, the offensive base has to be a little bit different when you don't have Tyler and a lot of these guards are forcing you into different things. I guess what did you like about the specific of just the way you guys ran offense in the first, second half? I think without Tyler, we were still able to get a lot of really good actions with Bam. You know, and, and Tyler is and Bam have the you know, that great synergy between the two of them and that, that was on my radar thinking like, okay, can we still get the ball to Bam where he can operate and do it efficiently enough? Uh, throughout the course of the game, and I, I thought, you know, the Jimmy Bam, you know, uh, two-man actions were outstanding tonight. Gabe was really good, you know, uh, you know, creating some triggers for us. And, and I thought Bouye had some some moments tonight where he also, um, you know, was able to get into the paint and, and make some plays, you know, for us. And and Max uh, tried to fill in, you know, in some of those handoffs and stuff. So he, he was able to get the ball back, you know, to Bam a few times. And those were all definitely good signs that we're not so reliant on just that two-man 
between Tyler and Bam that other guys can do it as well. Eric, the, he had one back-to-back MVPs, and then they get Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray <clears> back, <throat> and so the conventional wisdom was that his numbers would drop. Not that stats tell the whole story with him, but his numbers have it dropped, and he's got those two guys with him. How is this just continued evolution? Is he actually still getting better, like as scary as that Probably. prospect might be? Yeah, I, I would assume that he probably is getting better. I, I don't know enough of their, you know, nuances, you know, to know exactly where. Uh, but already he's probably seen every kind of coverage, you know, in the post and all the different ways to defend the cuts. And they do a great job of just putting him all over the court. And so if you take away the post-ups, which we're pretty good at, at doing that, you put him up at the top. If we disrupt that, they get to pick and rolls and then play out of them, you know, throw it back to them on, on those. Um, also the mid post flashes where we get bam. So they're, they're going to find a way to get him the ball, you know, somewhere, somehow. Uh, and then he just plays the game. He's just reading the defense. He, he's not predetermining anything, whether he needs to get a bucket or a pass. He's just reading where the mistake is. And he does that probably as well as anybody. Okay. Thank you.